Australia's flora evolved independently to adapt to extreme environmental conditions, changing from predominantly wet to dry. Hey, I'm Vanessa Fuchs, and in today's episode of What the Flora, we're gonna take a look at some of those unique species that have learned to not just survive, but actually love a sunburnt country. While you're watching, leave your questions in the comments and we'll have one of our experts get back to you. I'm James Clarkson, and right now I'm with Dr. Russell Barrett in the Australian Botanic Garden, Mount Annan. So Russell, you're a scientist here. Tell me what you do. So yes, I'm a research scientist or systematic botanist. And so my main role here is looking at the discovery and naming of new species. And along with that, assessing their evolutionary histories and aspects of their conservation and ecology. You told me once you grew up in Western Australia. Tell me what it's like to grow up in Western Australia and how cool the plants were adapted to that region are. Yeah, Western Australia is a really fascinating area, partly because it's so large and spans such a diverse range of environments from the tropical north um, to the wet forests of the south and such widespread deserts in the centre. And so there's a huge number of adaptations that plants have had to um, adapt to that extreme environment. And so there's just so many cool plants wherever you look over there and the diversity is really high both in the north and in the south. So you have all these really cool plants in Western Australia, do you have a favourite? Perhaps one of my favourites is a plant which uh, we didn't know existed for many years, um, but predicted that it might be there in the remote Kimberley, based on the fact that kakadu, which is far, is far better known, has got a lot of species that grow on cliff faces in these little fissures in the rock with basically no soil. And so we said, well, if kakadu's got a whole heap of these, the Kimberley must have some too. So we spent many years searching cliff faces in the remote parts of the Kimberley and eventually came across this shrub a few feet high. I only found a couple of populations in um, remote areas using helicopters, but they grow on these vertical um, rock faces with these, their base of their roots just going in with, you can't see any soil at all, but it's got these nice thick corky bases and it's this lovely baronia, which was a new species. Um, really, really rare, but quite an incredible plant, both for how it grows and for the fact that it took us so long to discover it. That's excellent. So also you was going to take us and show us a plant um, that you work on at the moment. Shall we go and have a look at that? Let's go. Great. I'm standing here with a plant of Jacksonia capulifera. This plant is in the pea family, Fabaceae, and it belongs to the tribe Mobilii which is a group that I'm currently working on with James on a fantastic national project, looking at the relationships of all the different species in this, this group. Jacksonia is a very interesting uh, group of peas in that it's actually completely leafless. So the leaves have become really reduced down to tiny scales that on most species are hard to see. And so it's done this, and so the, the flattened parts, we can see the green parts here, are actually flattened stems, and so like wattles, um, the leaves have actually really reduced or gone completely and it's using the stems to photosynthesize because the stems lose a lot less water, they have le far less dense uh, stomates um, and so by not having any leaves which can use a lot more water the plant can adapt to far more arid conditions and Jacksonians are found right across Australia um, but they're particularly rich in some of our arid areas. This particular species occurs on the northern sand plain south of Shark Bay in the southwest of Western Australia. And that's, that region there is seasonally very dry. And so particularly over that, that dry period, over the hot summers, is when it's really valuable uh, to be able to uh, use very little water. The species also has some quite corky bark, provide some protection against um, frequent fires. They're a really interesting group because they've often got quite showy flowers um, given they're not hidden by leaves. Another interesting aspect of Jacksonia is it's one of the few host plants for a tiny parasitic plant that actually grows inside the stems of Jacksonia and Davisia. Um, and you only ever know it's there when it sticks its flowers out um, through the, the base of the stems in these Jacksonias and Davisias. And there's a handful of these species in the southwest of Western Australia. Um, but we really don't know if there's more. We, they discovered a new one just a few years ago, but they're so rarely seen, it can be 10 to 15 years between sightings. The range of these Jacksonias and these diverse pea lineages can be host to, 
um, we're st are things we're still discovering. And so they're a fascinating group of plants and we're really excited to be learning more about their relationships and about their evolutionary history and how they've come to be adapted to the environments they're growing in. This plant right next to me, this is a really cool cycad. This is the McDonald Ranger cycad, or Macrosamia McDonaldi. And what's really cool about this cycad is it's found in Central Australia. Now, if you look closely at these leaves, they're quite spiky, so I don't want to get my eye too close to them, but it's covered in this really blue colored wax. And when plants have got this bluey wax on them, it's an adaptation for really dry and arid conditions. So the blue acts like a natural sunscreen. So some people, you know, like the idea of rubbing it off, put it on the skin, it'll help them. Not really, but it helps the plant. And it's actually the only species of Macrosamia in Central Australia. And there's no other ones around it. Actually, its closest relative is found in Perth in Western Australia. And that's quite interesting. So the question is, is how did this get there? And the truth is, we don't know. Because when we came here, this plant was already here. But it's found in this really dry environment with this red earth, almost like it's growing now, but in rock faces. And it adapted to seasonal flooding. It's got this, and it's able to take nitrogen directly from the atmosphere by producing these roots called colloid roots. And so when you're in soils that's really poor in nutrients, it can access essential nutrients it needs to help it survive. And it's one of these sort of stories of this type of plant that you only find in really dry regions. And this plant you only find in Australia. I hope you enjoyed that episode of What the Flora with James and Russell. If you like the show, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you've got any questions about something you've seen in today's show, then just leave it in the comments and we'll have one of our experts get back to you. Stay tuned because next month we've got another awesome episode. So make sure you hit subscribe.